My lord, my lord, we seem to have an issue on Earth. Oh, great. What is it now? They want another sign. Appearing on the toast wasn't good enough for them, huh? Huh? Get in return. Not even one blood sacrifice. I ought to flood them again, a bunch of ingrates. No, no, sir. It's it's a growing atheist show. It's called, uh, let, just give me a second. LATV, or Left at the Valley. Damn. Those atheists. Yeah. Hey, Big G, what's up? Oh, hi, Lucy. Got problems with the left turn at the thing or... Uh, left at the Valley, sir. Yeah, that's what I said, yeah. Yeah, you should smite them, big guy. Gabriel, bring out the Wheel of Smiting. Good idea. Yeah. Here you are, sir. All right, let's give it a big spin. Come on, big flood. Big flood. Watery death. Come on, let's do it. Seems you've landed on Boardwalk, and I've got two hotels, so there's so now you owe me four thousand dollars. Damn it! I always, always fall there. What the? Fuck? It's okay, big guy. Just go get the water. We'll take care of the rest. Okay, be right back. He's not very bright, is he? <sighs> well, the guy who tried to sacrifice his own son to convince himself to be nice because a dirt man and a rib woman took dietary advice from mistake in a magical garden, so... Yeah, not very bright at all. Hey, I'm kind of short on uh, cash. Mind uh, waiting till Sunday where my paycheck, I mean, uh, flock, starts paying? Sure, BG, but you owe me one. Great, great. Thanks, Lucy. You're the best. <laughs> Dumbass. What? Oh, sorry. I said smudge mash. <laughs> oh, smudge smash. Oh, it's like my favorite word. Smudge mash. Smudge mash. Smudge mash. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ravi. I'm an ex-Hindu atheist, and I took a left at the valley. Fantastic. I know we shouldn't have to scream that we're atheists. You know, we don't have non-astrologers and all that. But with the religious people taking over the world, I mean, we can either speak up or be pushed into a corner. I'm proud of being an atheist, a skeptic, a non-believer, an infidel, a heathen. I call it how I see it. I say it's ignorance, and you just call it faith and unsubstantiated claims. That's something to be ashamed. I'm an atheist. Coming at you from Scorching BC in Alligator, Florida, this is Left of the Valley 2.0. My name is Kevin, and I like romantic walks with my girlfriend on the beach until the LSD wears off. Then I realize I'm just dragging a mannequin across the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Joining me as usual is the team that won't brag about going to expensive places until we leave the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. No, that's really she takes a little rock, grows more confident, and becomes bolder. Sabrina. <laughs> <laughs> And he thinks oh, whoever invented right. autocorrect should burn in. Hello, <laughs> Brett Lee. <laughs> that's right. That Everybody is absolutely should. right. <laughs> Guys, welcome back. Hope you had a great week. Oh, as always. Well, you know, it's been always. a rough, actually this week, just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, we're, we're having dog issues, but that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Jack's the mascot. He'll be back soon. Yes. Oh, well. All right, so this week we'll be talking to, on the second half of the show, we'll be talking to a pirate, a pastafarian, Dread Pirate Higgs. Yarr! We never had a pirate on the show, so that should be fun. Yeah. But that's I'm, dre show. So I'm dreading it. But, actually, <laughs> <laughs> but first, let's do a chit chat. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, did you guys hear, um, in case you didn't know, the Olympics are going on. Really? I know, right? What? No. I'm telling you. <laughs> I don't think that's right. It's we still got a year. Yeah, <laughs> year. But they were pushed off because of COVID, so we all know that. So Olympics are going and so far, uh the Canadian team is doing pretty good for a summer Olympics. Yeah, I heard that actually. I, the funny thing is is all the medals, pretty much all the medals, I think it's actually all of them, actually won by women. Of course. Now Canada right now, as I write, as I write this, <laughs> we won about uh, twelve medals, which is for a country like Canada is really good. The US is of course the US and you know when we toast the Olympics there. I think they got like forty medals right now. So but we're not talking about that. Yeah, but, well, uh, I mean I mean, <laughs> come on. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. A winter Olympics is more of a thing <laughs> than the summer Olympics. 
We're the greatest nation on earth. So, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, of course, well, this show here has always been very pro women. Uh, but uh, the story in the U.S. Don't is... believe everything you hear. <laughs> <laughs> the story in the U.S. about women uh, in the Olympics is Simone Biles. Now, Simone Biles, in, in case you've never heard of her, she's an extraordinary gymnast, and she's a fantastic little powerhouse. And she decided to withdraw from the Tokyo Olympics mm-hmm. um, and citing that she needs to prioritize her mental health. God forbid. Uh, and, of course, conservatives lost their shit. Of course they did. Um, there's a lot of conservatives all over the place that basically, you know, call her a traitor, uh, that she's, you know, abandoning the team, blah, blah, blah. And my first thought is, you know what, guys? Simone Biles has, you know, umpteen medals, and she doesn't owe you a performance. No, she, she doesn't, does not. She doesn't owe you to be there. She could just retire now forever and thank you for your time, Simone, mm-hmm. if she really wanted to. And on top of that, she basically decided, you know, not to jeopardize the team of the, uh, the efforts of exactly. the team because she's feeling, she's not feeling mentally ready for this. She's yes. got what she describes as the twisties where she it's describes like it. Yeah, yeah, it's basically where, you know, your body might not uh, react accordingly with your brain. It's, so, it's, a, it's a term apparently gymnasts use between each other, saying, you know, sometimes your brain says, okay, I got to do a twist here, but then your body doesn't quite react the way it short. And when you're doing the kind of flips that she does... She's going to get hurt. Yes, exactly. So she's basically saying, you know what, I'm mentally not there to yeah. do this right now. Yeah, you could, yeah, you can get really hurt. And it's oh, like, I mean, I guess, you know, and technically it's like a mental health thing, and I'm glad that she, like, brought attention to mental health uh, nationally, you know, as a thing to say, like, as like, hey, uh, you know, but uh, the spins are like an actual thing. Like, you actually, you can't, if you, you can break your neck oh, on yeah. international television. Yeah, and Jesus. she's saying, hey, if I do this, I'm not going to win the gold. So why not step back and let somebody who could win the gold go in my place? Yeah. And on, on top of that, I mean, if you've ever seen anything in gymnastics related, have you seen these girls, you know, do quadruple whatever flip yeah, and when they no. land yeah. they land straight down on yeah. their heels and their legs and it, this is every time i see them land and then they strike the pose you know it's like it's it's like Ugh, because i can feel the, the thud yeah. and it reverberates through your entire body and you can only do this for so long absolutely mm-hmm. Simone Biles also has this little trick she likes to do uh as a bit of a showstopper where she kind of like she falls back on her butt but her muscles her, her gluteus maximus muscles and her leg muscles are so powerful yeah. that she bounces right back up. Yeah. And <laughs> first of all, that can't be great for you. Spot. I mean, if you if, if you've ever been like a fan of wrestling, you realize a lot of the wrestlers end up having problems with that because they always like, like land on their butt on mm-hmm. uh, on a, on a platform. Mm-hmm. So even with a cushion, eventually your spine. And, and I know she's it's young. Compression. Yeah, I mean, she's young. Yeah. She's in the early twenties and all that. But uh, anyway, Still the, the damage, point is. Yeah. She doesn't owe anything to anybody. Nope. And the you know she she's she's done the U.S. proud. She's done women proud. Mm-hmm. Tons of little girls are looking up to her right now, and she's doing the most mature thing I've seen in sports in a long time. Telling her fans, her devoted fans, and little girls are going to model their life after what she's done. Say saying it's all right to step back. Yep. It's all right mm-hmm. to step back and take a day for your mental health. That's important. And that I've never seen in sports. Nope. And I just applaud her for it. that. Yep, me Absolutely. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, of course, conservatives are losing their shit all over the place because, you know, it's, it's like, I can't believe these people. They're basically calling her a traitor. And you know what? What do you want to do? You want her to break her neck? And then the next day, you're going to do what? You're going to move on to something else. Well, and if she plays yeah. and, and say she does do all right and doesn't like break a bone or something, but There's she still, still does a shitty performance and then she doesn't win. Nope. This is 2021. This is not okay anymore. You know, this is not about mental toughness. This is about, this is a game. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah, it's not a life or death situation here. This is a game. Exactly. Stop throwing it up like some kind of movie. And if she doesn't do that triple axle swing left, whatever bounce, exactly. Somehow, so the Thanos is going to come and, and, and you know destroy the earth. It's not what's happening. We're, we're just doing a game, a friendly game between nations. And and she still had two broken toes that she was willing to still compete with. Oh, I didn't know that. So, like, give me a fucking break when you're going to sit out there and, like, call her a quitter and shit. You know what? Tucker. Mm-hmm. Tucker. Tuckums. Yeah. You <laughs> fucking go do be able to do fucking moves that they almost have to decide whether or not you're allowed to do them because it's so dangerous that they yeah. shouldn't be allowed you know you might not be allowed to do use those moves to compete and then have a fucking opinion you 
ridiculous. Well, oh, Twenty percent of the sugar can't even do a cartwheel. So <laughs> can you tuck and roll though? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's why we call them tuckums. Because all he does is tuck and roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> a little slow on the uptake there, but you know well, that's what post is for. Anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> speaking of conservatives, um, after a Reagan book, which oh, was a conservative God. version of Facebook, and a Frank talk, which yeah. is, of course, the <laughs> chaotic, <laughs> yes. Now comes the blog, <sighs> MegaCoin. What? Which is, is that crypto- the new cryptocurrency? <laughs> exactly. It's oh, a fuck cryptocurrency, off. Pro Trump cryptocurrency. <laughs> Apparently, a th- over a thousand people have signed up so far. Of course, for the pro Trump currency. Okay, uh, that doesn't exist because cryptocurrency itself doesn't exist. But keep going. Uh, anyway, there's already trouble with this. Um, of course, the website with very poor security that was associated with MagiCoin <laughs> has already <laughs> exposed hacked. the emails and uh, yeah. had been hacked, and passwords and cryptocurrency wallets and the IP addresses of the users. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, the data also shows that the majority of it has been actually allocated to the creator. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. Um, Trump? It, it, no, he wouldn't know how to no, create that no. shit. It sure, it sure feels like a scam, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, a lot of these uh, conservative radio talk show hosts are gifted some of this mega coin currency as a way to promote the product. <sighs> of course. So... <laughs> They're just like, hey, man, these fucking dipshits will buy anything if you say it's conservative. Look, yeah, let's just make it. a thing, yeah. and they'll all buy it, even though it's not a thing. It's so true. It's so true. They, 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 they will buy anything that just says Trump, MAGA coin, whatever. Yeah, they, they will. You know, you could do MAGA toilet paper, and they will mm-hmm. buy it. And Wipe their like, fucking asses with Trump's face. Like, like, please the do. The MAGA debate. Yeah, yeah. The, it's, it's just yeah, like, exactly. The MAGA debate. <laughs> <laughs> and you know i can't help but laugh because you know the whole trump to begin with is the biggest grift of them all and he's an atheist people if, yeah well clearly you know, i mean I he really I, is i'm sure you could, you could say he's an atheist he's most definitely not christian but he, that's who he appeals to he's well, a fake fucking christian i would say he's a trumpist he believes himself to be a god yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah that's I probably that. accurate yeah I, I would go with that actually he thinks he's his own religion totally yeah exactly I really don't like the whole like not worship any gods because i should be worshipped as a god okay <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see where this goes. God knows. It's probably not going to go very far, but it is Trump. It is MAGA. Who knows? All right. Moving on. All right, Sabrina, you got a top 10 for us? I do. I do. Fantastic. These are top 10 petty ways to get back at your shitty neighbor. Oh, God. Because, you know, I got I to gotta continue on the, piss, not on the petty series. Yeah. yeah you know. Pen pen there. Yeah, well, you know, I've got some fun Facebook groups that give me good ideas. The top 10 (laughs) ways to get back at your shitty neighbor. Yes. (laughs) Putting an eel up. No. No. (laughs) We're going to stay away from the eel. There's no eels in toilets. You'll find out later why we talk about eels. Yeah, let's not worry about that yet, okay? (laughs) Number 10. If there are white... uh, My God, I can't talk today. Number 10. If they are right wing nuts Most likely. which is you know if you got a shitty neighbor that's probably what they are sign them up for every black lives matter and every lbd lbtgqia plus newsletter you can think of phone mail snail mail they'll just be driven nuts hell sign them up for scientology too because <laughs> they'll never leave them alone <laughs> that's true <laughs> well that's hoping you have enough of his information to do something like that yeah. If you have a mailing address, another they, they live next door, dude. Next door, they have a. Well, yeah, but address. I mean, normally they'll ask for an email as well. Well, you can just sign up a you fake email if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> know your neighbor's email. Use it. I can see you two are the evil piece. Of course, this, uh, yes. I, 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 yes. I'm innocent. I don't do this kind of <laughs> I eat ass. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that, but one of the biggest pranks I pull, and it was you, there's no way you do that today, but back then um, we had for porn on, on Pornhub, they had porn magazines. So what we did is we took what? We, yeah, right magazine. <laughs> one dinosaur rolled here. So so what I did is I took one of these big white stickers on a typewriter. 
So that's how old this is, right? So there was an old typewriter, and I basically typed the uh, mailing address of a person, which was his work. <laughs> and I took that, that sticker, and I bought a, a, a copy of Gigantic Asses Weekly or something like that. <laughs> Slapped the sticker oh, on the on the plastic and just rolled oh. it and put it in the mail slot. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that's an <laughs> evil, evil prank to do. Don't do that. Just, yeah, and just put rainbow stickers all over their truck. Because yeah. they got a truck. Let's yeah, say, yeah right that works those. too. <laughs> oh, number nine, if you have a loud neighbor that pisses you off at night, just start doing your yard work first thing in the morning. As soon as you're legally allowed to do it, around here it's about 7 a.m., Blow up that lawnmower, you know, the leaf blower, leaf blower, anything you got. It's the, you know, you got to chop down a tree, start that chainsaw. Start that chainsaw. You know, you're going to really piss off everybody, but it might just be worth it if, if your neighbor's is that shitty. <laughs> even if you don't have to do it, just start it up and just leave it running. <laughs> yeah, just leave it running. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> right. Put it as close to their window as you can and just. Gah, 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 gah. Yeah, this one go. is taken from a guy who's yeah. actually decided to move next door and he <laughs> hated her. So, what he did is he put up a sculpture in his yard, but the spine of the sculpture was a fuck you finger. Oh, <laughs> enjoy it, the neighbor. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's number eight on the list. Here's a really good one, number seven. Send him a glitter bomb. A glitter bomb? A glitter bomb. So, you can go to this website. It's called shipyourenemiesglitter.com. It will <laughs> anonymously. Where do you find these things? I told you. I'm anyway. Uh, so it will anonymously send your neighbor a glitter bomb. So it'll have the following note attached to it. Congratulations! In your hand, you're holding the result of somebody's valuable time and energy spent to make your day just a little bit worse. Feel <laughs> proud. Feel proud. You might not think this is a very big deal. It's just a bit of glitter after all, you say. But let us correct you. This is not just a bit of glitter. This is a whole lot of glitter. Make friends with it now because for the next few days, weeks, and months, this glitter will be your constant companion. You will find it on your skin, in your hair, and even in your most delicate of places. Wherever you go, you will leave a trail of glitter in your wake. You might have just been anointed the King Midas of Glitter, and you will soon begin turning your dearest friends and most prized possessions into living monuments of glitter. If you're wondering what to do now, we have a suggestion or two. First, you might want to try vacuuming up any excess glitter that you can. Don't get us wrong, this won't help at all. But it's always funny to imagine your feeble attempts to rid yourself of your well-deserved craft herpes. So... <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Secondly, remember the old adage don't get mad, get even. Shipping Ooh. a magnificent envelope of glitter right back to your adversary should do the trick. It might not be original, but it will definitely be effective. Not sure which enemy sent it? Send glitter to them all. Good luck. This is a great business wow. project because now you're, just, you're just calling for more customers on That's revenge. A, yes. It's a solid yeah. business model. Well, yeah, it was uh, like, shift your crap, <laughs> shift your enemies. <laughs> and no, I'm not wow. being sponsored by them. But anyway, <laughs> should be a sponsor of the show. <laughs> if you really want to piss them off, you can actually ship them uh, glitter dicks. Oh, which oh, is that would be mine. I would do the glitter dicks. Yeah, yeah. It, in oh, an yeah. exploding tube. So anyway, <laughs> number six, sprinkle catnip seeds in their yard. You'll have. All the neighborhood cats just roaming all over their grass. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. And I've got like 17 of these alley cat. Like you if you walk through the alley at any yeah. moment, you're seeing like 20 cats. Yeah. Oh so I'm like, <laughs> this is perfect for my my area. You know, once I worked at a um a rendering plant and they were uh, they, one of the products they made was blood meal, mm -hmm. which was essentially, you know, uh powdered blood product anyway yep. it's, it's, pure it's protein. great for uh fertilizing yes. lawns and it's a great fertilizer booster so what we did is we took blood meal mm -hmm. and we went on somebody's yard and basically sprinkled it so it would actually write fuck you on it <laughs> so <after laughs> your grass you should... is growing saying fuck you exactly there's a, there's a, the grass grows deeper and lusher and he says we're evil brent yes I know. I'm right. Fuck you. Fifth amendment. I did not. I'm not going to. Only this only works if your neighbor is has a fear. But number five is take some rubber snakes and put them in their garden beds. The more realistic is the better, you know, because uh, once they go out, they're going to see this gigantic snake in their garden bed. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, these are harmless. Nobody's going to die. <laughs> number. Could four. have heart attacks. 
Number four is, you know, kind of piggybacking off the glitter a bit. I, you know, we have glitter dicks, but you can also go to a website called dicksbymail.com oh, really and you can that. actually send them a bag of dicks. <laughs> they will you know, it's a, a bag of gummy dicks to anyone you think is a big dick. Again, it's anonymous, so nobody knows who sent it. They get some candy. I mean, that's delicious. nice. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you go eat a bag of dicks? A great big dick, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, this one's a little bit mm -hmm, evil. It happens at night. You go out night with some instant mashed potatoes and oh, sprinkle it on their lawn. Instant and, mashed potatoes. Uh-huh. Instant mashed potatoes. What happens when you add water to instant mashed potatoes? You get mashed potatoes. What happens overnight? The grass gets dewy. Yes. Instant mashed potatoes plus dew equals a great big mess first thing in the morning when they come out. <laughs> <laughs> Bring all the birds to the yard. Eating them mashed potatoes up. That's great. That's true. <laughs> <funny. laughs> Number two, do you have an asshole parker in your hood? Oh, so, there's one in every neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what you do is you oh, take yeah. your car and you get someone to help you park it as close as you can to their driver's side door. Oh. Because then yeah. they can't get in their car. They have <laughs> but to go on the passenger side, if they're a real dick, you get a friend to come and park side. on the passenger on side. On the other side. Yeah. And then they're really fucked. And then they're going through their sunroof. Yeah. If they have one. <laughs> <laughs> or climbing through the trunk if they can open it through the... You know. Yeah, yeah, see. Yeah. I'm only a little devious. That's a good you could do in the, in the mall of a parking lot. You know. Yeah, in the mall right. parking lot. Yeah, yeah. When you got some it double goes, parking asshole. Yeah. Just like those dipshits that park with the line right in the middle yeah. of their car. Fuck yeah. you, asshole. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. Yeah, let's just the fuck up five special. parking spots and do the exact same thing on either side. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And number one is kind of a little bit pet Okay, it's a lot petty. So what you do is you get a great big bag of like 10,000 rubber bands. Mm -hmm. And you, again, you got to do this at night when nobody can see you. Make sure they don't have cameras because otherwise they're going to fucking catch you. Anyway, <laughs> sprinkle them rubber bands all over their driveway. You can't sweep them up. So they're going to be out there having to pick them up one oh. by one by one. Ooh, you're right. Day. Oh, are I fucking hate those that work. Like, I have to, see? Yeah. Think about it now. Imagine coming out and seeing rubber bands all over your driveway. They need, they need to have a, a wet vac or something. Yeah, I'd be cursing for days. Oh, yeah. See? What if you use a rake? I don't know. No, anyway, it's going to work. They slide that's how you right get back your petty they shit. Slide right petty. under. Yeah. All you're doing is pissing them right off, but it's fun. Well, you have to get on your bad side. Oh, yeah, you yeah. got a bit too much uh, pettiness going on there. <laughs> Thank Facebook. They're the one who taught me how to be this petty. That's brilliant. <laughs> uh, I love it. Oh, yeah. There you go. Top 10 ways to get back at your crappy ass neighbor. Nice. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Dude. We, yeah, should, yeah. we should warn the neighbors. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. All right. And four, a segment we always love. Things that make you go, hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. And that should be an interesting story this week. All right. Now, you know constipation? It's an annoying condition, and sometimes it can actually create some health problems. You know, it's yeah. not a good thing to have. No. After all, you know, they can build a whole industry about being regular, so it's got to be important, right? Mm-hmm. But what about what about what are you supposed to do when you're the kind of person you know that's you kind of like a do-yourself kind of person? <laughs> a man from Xinjiang. I'm, I'm a little scared. Yeah, a from man from where? Xinjiang in China. Uh -huh. This is a uh, uh, East China a Jinshu province. Mm -hmm. Decided to take care of the blockage himself. So what he did, he had become constipated and wasn't always he wasn't really apparently aware of usual medical advice for shitty relief. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, like use, laxatives, right? Yeah, yeah, apparently laxative is not a thing he was aware of. Mm. So he decided to use things that you know an old folk remedy. So was it a little, a little quiz for you guys? Was oh, it no. a? Was it a mixture of herbs in a drink? Was it Ooh. B? Was it the classic animal? Or was it C? Was it ramming up a live eel up his ass? Well, it has to be that or else it would be on it. If you answered C, congratulations. Oh my god, are you fucking kidding me? You that was supposed to be the joke option. What? No. That's the <laughs> joke <laughs> option. What? No, no. Okay. What's well, going on here? <laughs> a common thing that happens in China. Okay. So it's apparently been done before and it never an works eel, out fish. well. An eel. A fish. 
Yes. A uh, live the, fish. The, the, the idea <laughs> is the eel is essentially going to eat okay. the poop um, and is, it's crawling its way there. How does it breathe? <laughs> well, they don't think about that too much. So <laughs> the eel, once it was forced up the guy's anus, uh, traveled up the rectum, uh, took a left at the hamster and the dildo <laughs> into his colon, and he bit a hole through it and made its way into the abdomen. <laughs> Oh my! What? So it made it through some of his How the hell shit you there. Well, and eels are tough. <laughs> you have to explain to the eel first, like what's going on here. Okay. <laughs> you, through, you come through the stomach. You can come up his throat, out his mouth. Everything will be all good. Oh god! I got. <gasps> I'm good. I should put some Mission Impossible here. <laughs> right. Agent, Agent Double Eel. It's time for you to go to undercover. Real deep. <laughs> To a shitty territory. Oh my god! <laughs> the shell that he like got the message on explodes like after things. Like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so the poor guy. This is definitely me making go. Hmm. Things are making go. Hmm. <laughs> indeed, right? So Yo, the guy what was, the fuck? No, that, that's. <laughs> see, I want, so what happens if you, you get an eel up your rectum and you sit down? Is it like, like wiggle? Is it oh my god! Like, oh god, I can't. This I can't is not stop. really a visual. <laughs> right now, I think I'm clenching my butt just a little bit. <laughs> no, 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 no fish, no fish. If you're wow. a human, you are clenching your sphincter really hard. Oh, I totally am. <laughs> look, check it out, guys. I got a tail. Look at this. Look, There's look. No check it out. <laughs> There's no fish period. I'm still like, nope. <laughs> you know, I love to order like uh, like unagi on my sushi, which no is more. actually eel, but I'm really going to reconsider mm, now. No, no. <laughs> not happening. It so might have been up somebody's butt. You don't even know. You you never know. know. Right? <laughs> so the guy was understandably too shy to seek medical help. But, <laughs> but after the second day, oh. so he spent an entire day with eel up your ass. Oh, my. <laughs> so, after the second day, they operated and managed to remove, thankfully, it was only an eight eel inch. It was only eight inch eel. <laughs> <laughs> so, thankfully, they managed to remove that. But apparently, they've managed to remove before. There were, one of the records was like, like 17 to 20 inches of eel in the guy's ass. So, and amazingly, wow. the eel survived. Wow. The eel survived. Oh, the eel's fine. I, I mean, kudos to you. Oh, oh good. Eel? But then, that, you know, stomach acid might have done. That eel has seen some shit. Let's just <laughs> say. Let's see seen some shit. <laughs> the eel didn't go all the way to the stomach, right? It just went. Right. Stop the colon. colon. Yeah. And then, and then, then took he, a left at the hamster. Took right. a left at the hamster. <laughs> one pass, switch your gear. And then the, the abdomen. He's just hanging out. <laughs> go, you'll go. I think I would have rooted for the eel anyway. So. Yes. so imagine. I'm just glad he didn't use an electric eel. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that would be electrifying, that's for sure. You get exposure to you got yeah. static electricity diarrhea. Yeah. It, it was quite shocking. <laughs> so, yeah. so right now, I think I think we should really uh, take a minute to uh, call Metamucil and do like an eel flavor. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> sell better in China. An <laughs> eel scent. Yeah. You were yeah. here, so... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, so that was that things that make you go, hmm, moment. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> That's great. All right, Brent, you got another brilliant moment for us, my friend? I do. So, I what Brought we have... <laughs> yeah, another brilliant moment brought to you by religion. So, um, and, and I know this has been kind of going on for a little bit now. Like, Hobby Lobby has sort of always been... <laughs> <laughs> a <laughs> uh, something that is, you know a, a group that's always been to you know great at sticking their foot in their mouth and Maybe having an egg on their face. Hobby and... lobbyists to those who don't know. Yeah, for, for just the, just in case. For the so, minorities, mostly for right. The, yeah. No, good point. No, so Hobby Lobby is a Christian run, uh, uh, Christian ran organ organization that basically um, they. You know they've hit in the news for multiple reasons, but uh, one of one of the more egregious things that they do is that they won't allow their employees to have health insurance that covers contraceptives or any type of birth control. Is it like a store? Um, it's an arts and crafts store. Oh, okay. It's an arts okay. and crafts store. I'm so sorry. I should have started with that. It's an arts and crafts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. A bit equivalent of actually Michaels. heard of them now that you mention it. Oh, Michaels okay. is up here in Canada. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, and we so got they, Michaels. They don't too. allow. 
contraceptives. No, not for, plan. for their health insurance. Right. Yeah. It's, it's really Crazy. fucked up. Yeah, um, that is. But another thing that they do that, that, that the family, it's the green family uh, is the, the family that owns Hobby Lobby. Um, they actually also run this uh, Bible museum. Yes. Right. Oh. And so the Bible museum um, has been in the news like squarely like every couple of months for the past couple of years for every stupid thing you could possibly imagine. Yes, the last uh, time we actually talked about them, they had received uh, parchments of the Dead Sea Scrolls that were fake, and they bought. Them. Yes. Oh okay. My. See, that was one of the. Yeah, that was one of them. So, oh. to to uh, to make the list, let's see. So, fifty five hundred artifacts smuggled through black market dealers, funded ISIS. So they were funding <laughs> ISIS by buying the yeah. stuff that they're. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And, Go, you ultra Christian organization. Go, right? <laughs> you too can help ISIS by building this macrame. <laughs> <laughs> That's nuts. But another funny one was the fact that they recently re uh, they returned the lunar Bible, uh, which was have it was claimed to have gone to the moon <laughs> and brought back, and it was an artifact or a, a you know a souvenir, really, uh, but. <laughs> It, it turns out it hadn't even gone to the moon, and so they returned. Oh, no. I'm shocked. Oh, but you know, I'm glad because it seems to me that bringing the the Bible to the moon looks like an inspiring moment for Christian, but really, it's just extra weight that's useless. Yeah, and it's just yeah. don't I'm gonna let this. a Bible go. Why? Like, what's the point? Like, hold on, I want this Bible to go there and back. Yeah, Please. just so I can say it's been there and back. Yeah. <laughs> that's basically it um, and then like you said they ad admitted that all 16 fragments of the Dead Sea Scrolls that they've had uh, were actually forgeries no. so these people are basically just targets for frauds for, for totally. uh, shysters they're, man they're, like, <laughs> what you're saying, yeah. they just blindly accept all the facts about Christianity these are the kind of guys you can go to and say hey I've discovered a piece of Noah's boat and they will buy it yeah, right. Because they just they they have this bias that just they just have to believe it. Yeah, so, and they they <laughs> for sure. And so the most recent one, uh, the the way that they've gotten back in the news was uh, in uh, 2020, and it was the Gilgamesh Dream Tablet mm -hmm. was yeah, what they they bought. Um, and uh, it's a, they bought it for 1.6 million dollars. <laughs> they keep totally that over. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Sure. And it turns out it was actually a property of the nation of Iraq. Mm -hmm. So they had no right. I mean, it was it was uh, gotten through uh, fraud or not fraud, price, uh, price. but <laughs> the black market again. You know, because that seems to be the only way they know how to get anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's been it was basically uh in 2020 it was taken away from them by the u.s government uh they they confiscated it and like you know we're doing their investigation well it's now officially um uh held by the american government it is it is the american government has confiscated that officially and I mean, now are the official owners of it and i'm assuming they're going to return it to uh, iraq i'd assume so yes uh, uh, I, I think that's yeah, yeah, exactly. It's so, a part of, the of Gilgamesh, this is like huge, which is so funny that they'd want that in the first place because it kind of, to me, it this whole thing kind of makes it seem like, hey, your book's not real because here's like the original no. story that your book ripped your shit off from. <laughs> Why everybody, would you want that? Everybody knows that the Epics of Gilgamesh was one of the bases for the story of Noah, mm -hmm. and, and and you know, you think as a Christian, you don't want that to be. Out there, and even the epics of Gilgamesh were based on another older story, which I can't remember. Or no, no. so you yeah, think it, you wouldn't want it to, you wouldn't want this to be known, but hey, what do they know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it, you know, because it, but basically, here's what it is it's like the, the epic of Gil, Gilgamesh is like where a guy was like told by the gods, multi, you know, like multiple gods, uh, that there was going to be this flood, right? And so he was like, okay, I gotta build a boat. And then he had his own livestock, right? And so he put his own livestock onto the boat to, to escape this, this flood, right? 
you know, and you could see how the story would telephone its way into yeah. the Bible story, right? So, like, yeah, no, it's like this guy in a town, city, country, you, fuck it, the world, man, the world, yeah, yeah. you know, and it was, and he had his livestock, like. The, the the animals in the the county the country the fuck it the world the animals in the world <laughs> all went to this boat <laughs> you know what I mean? like you can see how it got there like real easily oh, you know? Know, like the entire world was wiped out but somehow two lions survived without eating any other animals on that boat. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I like, exactly. that meme where, I like that meme where they have the arc in the back. Where I have this really saw fat it, yeah. Lion I really fat lion. She was... cruised, but great buffet. Yeah. <laughs> you just see Gabriel back there on the grill. Okay, well, I got a lion coming up. All right, I got a nice uh, steak here for you. Here's a got little steak. <laughs> there's, been so, there's been so many memes done about Noah's uh, flood that are even better than the story itself. You know, I really like the one where the unicorns are like on top of the mountain that's been flooded over. So, oh my God, that was today? And the boat's <laughs> Like, oh shit, we missed it. We missed it. Damn it. <laughs> Shouldn't have smoked so much last night. I knew it. I right. knew it. Yeah, uh, uh, fun thing, uh, also about the epics of Gilgamesh. If I remember correctly, the the arc uh, supposedly uh, where the, uh, the the guy runs away from or floats away from the flood is actually a cube. It's in the shape of a cube. Now, don't quote me on that, but I believe that's the case. It's not like <laughs> a, like the boat boat like we think of Noah. It's actually like a cube shape. So, so instead of a rectangle. Yeah, because <laughs> it's just a rectangle, is what they got going. Right, like, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big should ass. Have, should have been one of those uh, those uh, plastic inflatable balls, you know. <laughs> you just go in and you roll on top of the water there. Oh yeah, no, yeah, that would actually would that would actually make more sense uh, <laughs> as far as like a practical use. <laughs> uh, what they're trying to do here. <laughs> I, I, I was also told that apparently uh, Hobby Lobby, because of this, uh, they were also fined $3 million as well. They were, uh, yeah. By the Good. government. And, uh, well, that was for the other one. They were fined $3 million, hold on, for the 5,500 artifacts that were smuggled via black market uh, that funded ISIS. That that They had to return all that. I mean, and they I, were fined $3 million for that. I applaud that. But at the same time, when you a guy like what was his name Green, Steve Green, you said, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's the Green Jam. Three million, man, really three million dollars. It's like me being fined three bucks, right? Yeah, and, that's true. All right, here's your three bucks. Go away. Mm -hmm. He's gonna keep doing his, his stupidness because you know his faith propels him to do so. I guess. <laughs> yeah, they were just like, well, we saved three million in not giving uh, them health insurance that covered contraceptives <laughs> and other birth control anyway. So this is yeah, right. yeah, exactly. all right. It's all right. Because <laughs> you know we're breaking even. Populated right now. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for that, Brent. Yeah, really no appreciate kidding. that. Uh, when we come yeah. back, we'll be talking to a pastafarian, Dread a pirate Higgs. <laughs> So I hope you guys all bought your, your, your cutlasses and your eye patches and everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You stay with us. We'll be right back. I just have devil horns. That's all. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> It's where atheists gather. This is LATV 2.0. All right, our next guest is a pirate from the land of beyond, and he's a pacifarian. He's a snappy dresser and a snazzy dancer. Dread Pirate Higgs, thank you so much for coming on the show. Well, thank you for having me. Yar. Yar. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's great. Oh, oh my God. Uh, we've never had a pasta fairy on the show, so uh, we're really excited about that. And uh, may his newly appendage bless you all. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I think we should start with the idea of uh, maybe you'd be so kind to give us a bit of a, a background bio as to who Dread Pirate Higgs is. Well, uh, right now I'm uh, serving as the captain of the uh, Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster of British Columbia. We are a registered church, or re sorry, a registered society, nonprofit. 
under the BC Societies Act and have been since 2016. Wow. I didn't know yeah. that. I did not know that either. I didn't even know we had uh, an actual church of the uh, Fine Speaking. Oh, well, I knew BC. that. There's actually a branch in Grand Forks where I used to live. Really? That's that's, that's where I'm from. <gasps> really? you got to be kidding me. What are I the odds? I used to live there. What are the odds? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's I, be honest. Was, Those are the best. For I'm the guy that started yeah. here in, well, not here because I'm not in Grand Forks right yeah. now, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's where our home base is. And I love we Grand actually, Forks. We actually have a church building that yeah. we use for our meetings. Um, and we have them, uh, we, we call them pastats, which is the third <laughs> Friday of third Friday of each month. And, uh, we, uh, celebrate with, uh, some prayer and some shanties and, uh, some pasta, of course. Yeah. You know what's going to happen? And both you guys are both in Grand Forest. One of you is going to say, you got, you know, Jesse, Jesse, of course. <laughs> well, Everybody I, I, I lived there as an adult and I actually lived in E. Holt and I, I really didn't go into town all that much, but yeah, I actually was in a lot of the local groups, so we probably have come across each other. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds? Oh. <laughs> you live in Grand Fork? I did, yeah, uh, from 2016 to 2019. Oh, wow, okay. Her, mo her mother's still there. Right? Yeah, my mom's still there, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you'll have to come, you'll have to give me a shout when you come out to visit and yeah. well, we'll I do quite see if we can coincide a meeting. Yeah. That's That'll a done awesome. deal. That's a done deal. <laughs> All right, anyway, all right, Greg. Sorry. Maybe, 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 Derail, I'm maybe, so good at that. <laughs> maybe you to explain uh, maybe your apostasy. How? Uh, I mean, I'm assuming you came out of the faith yourself. And how did that? Uh, where? Which denomination did you come from? Which faith did you come from? How did that uh, your journey into apostasy and discovery of Pasifarianism happen? Well, uh, so I was raised a Roman Catholic. Um, My condolences. And, pardon me. My condolences. <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. <laughs> Um, and so my, my transition took a long, long time. Um, and, you know, it's my understanding in, in talking with other people that um, true apostasy doesn't come easily. Mm -hmm. It comes over a, a long period of time as, you know, the incongruities and inconsistencies and all the rest uh, um, that a person, you know, a reasoning person, uh, when they examine uh, certainly the texts from which uh, this whole thing is based, and then the uh, the creed and the dogmas and all that, you start to see um, just how uh, how departed they are from uh, reality and and reason. And um, yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it took me, like I say, it took me a long time. But um, you know, it happened uh, probably. You know, I guess when the last nail in the old uh, proverbial coffin was probably around 2010 um and then i just spent a lot of time kind of searching for something you know still having a, an underlying belief that uh, there are some inscrutable mysteries uh in the universe that um, we don't have answers for and you know uh, maybe there's something to it and and so my search continued um and so uh you know i came across pastafarianism in 2015 and uh, sort of hooked into that community and then uh, quickly found that, uh, discovered that, uh, yeah, that was the, that's the religion for me. And so I, uh, in 2016, in 2016, I got my, uh, my minister, ministeroni cred credentials. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and yeah. I hooked up with, um, uh, some other folks that, uh, like I said, the community I uh, found, and uh, we decided that even in the little community of Grand Forks, which is about, you know, 4,000 people, and all quite highly religious, is a highly religious community. <laughs> there's like five churches. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and cer certainly there's a big Duke of Board component. Mm -hmm. um, so, Are, uh, is that Jesus anyway. Saves billboard still there as you drive into town? What's that? Is the Jesus Saves billboard still there? Is he driving? Oh well, yeah, there's two of them now. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah, and they're and they're big and they're big horrible and red. Oh, and they're lit, yeah, and, uh, and you, know, you can't miss horrible. them. <laughs> it's a good thing those are there because well, I wouldn't you know, know what I, Jesus does. I do, I'm a realtor, so I, I was thinking of uh, one of the signs that on the back side of it, I have my uh, pastafarian. Um, church notification as well like may you be touched by his noodly appendage or something oh like that. yes <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. yeah i think i think it needs to happen 
I agree. I'll help pay for that. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's make this happen. A little crowdfunding thing. Yeah, yeah. A little crowdfunding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Patreon goal. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 like I say, um, uh, just to continue is that uh, you know, in that small community, we managed to round up enough people uh, to start a, a, a nonprofit under the BC Societies Act, and um, uh, we have both paid and, and non-paid members. Of course, uh, it's not much. I mean. We, we charge um, $17 for uh, voting rights to the membership, which coincidentally is the cost to get your license photo retaken. And so we've uh, told people that if you go into um, the BC services or driver services uh, branch and opt to get your photo taken with your colander or your tricorn or whatever else, um, we'll take that in lieu of a, a yearly membership. So. <laughs> I love it. Oh my. Okay. But right, right now, we're, we're, he's talking to three atheists that know what passivarianism uh, is. True. But okay. maybe for the uh, the audience out there that the uneducated fairly, uh, people that don't know, maybe you'd be so kind to explain to them what is the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster? Okay, yeah, well, sure. Um, well, uh, back in uh, 2004, um, Bobby Henderson uh, was at a meeting of the Kansas State School Board, and uh, there was a contingent there that were trying to introduce intelligent design into the science class curriculum. And, uh, and you know, sort of uh, nonplussed about this, he said, well, you know, I mean, if you're going to teach intelligent design in, in uh uh, science class, then by all rights, uh, fair time, fair and equal time should be given to um, other religions, such as the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. And so at that meeting, of course, it ended up, you know, sort of as a parody, as a statement um, of uh, not mixing uh, church and state, essentially, mm -hmm. or church and science. Um, that is essentially how the uh, how the flying spaghetti monster was revealed to the to the world for the first time. So 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 much like Joseph Smith finding uh, gold plates buried out in his backyard <laughs> um, and starting Mormonism uh, or um, Latter Day Saints, right? Mm -hmm. The Mormons. Um, so too did uh, did uh, Bobby Henderson share with us the first pasta meal. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and so you know to in. Just in further answer to your question, that's how it started. Mm -hmm. But uh, now it's really, it has really become an international movement. And, you know, like any religion, uh, people believe to varying degrees uh, as to what that means to them. And so, you know, um, in, a, in essence, it could be considered like a, maybe Sikhism, which is sort of atheistic in its, in its own way where you have avatars representing different aspects of, of nature and of mm -hmm. the universe and of those inscrutable mysteries, as I uh, indicated before. But it is, it is. I mean, we take it seriously, uh, like I, I certainly do, and I know many others that do as well, mm -hmm. but it, there's no, absolutely no requirement um, for anyone to uh, take it as seriously as anyone else. I mean, it's, it's um, it's the least dogmatic religion in the world, and certainly the most peaceful, as uh, no war has ever been fought over it. Um, and uh, and and it's a, a you know a rally point for people who are having like various countries around the world have different degrees of um, institutionalized uh, religion mm -hmm. and religious pri privilege. I mean, um, in Canada here, of course. We are, our state religion is Anglicanism because of the queen, the monarch. Um, and in Russia, they, they have, uh, you know, different Christian beliefs that, um, you know, are supported by the state. Mm -hmm. um, Australia, same thing. Uh, they won't even let them form a nonprofit society because uh, they're a sort of uh, right wing conservative uh, government um, doesn't like what uh, Pastafarians and the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, they don't like what it represents. So we are essentially just trying to stand for 
the separation of church and state and the um, disillusion of uh, uh, institutionalized uh, religious privilege. Mm. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of uh, faith out there that, um, or I should say, a lot of people that compare FSM uh, Pastafarianism to uh, the Satanists. And the, 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 yeah. so, I mean, in a way, uh, it's a weird question to ask, but it's a bit of a joke religion, right? I mean, you guys are essentially atheist, and you're kind of using that to make a point. No, and, and that's a that's a completely, and with all due respect, I would say that's a completely unfair thing to say mm. because um like i say uh there's a lot of people who believe odd things within whatever religion they happen to be a part of mm -hmm. so like i say like personally i believe there are aspects of the universe that are inscrutable at the moment and it could almost be god of the gaps mm. um or even a pascal's wager you know yep, what i mean yep, yep. but um you know there are I'm, you know, think about this. I'm, I'm an atheist to Thor and yes. I'm an atheist to the Christian God. Yes. You know, I'm an atheist to 99% of all gods that have ever uh, existed in, in human civilization and society. Mm -hmm. So yes, we're all atheists to a certain degree. Um, but I just choose to uh, align my, my awe and my wonder and my sense of mystery uh, under the banner of the flying spaghetti monster, because again, it's least the least dogmatic. Um, it allows me the freedom to express myself. It allows me to have uh, to have fun, uh, to uh, parody uh, silly silliness, and mostly we parody ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, so, the, you know, the, having that platform to kind of poke fun at ourselves as silly human beings uh who have all kinds of crazy beliefs that's just something we can that's something i can get behind um i just try not to take myself too seriously i totally understand on this show where we have a hard time with being silly but you know once in a while we manage <laughs> <laughs> so it's supposed to be serious man like you're making yeah, it yeah, like, look. Look. So, <laughs> so essentially you're basically uh the, the flying spaghetti monster himself is kind of a placemat or, yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's, it's yes. a great symbol, by the way. I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, one yeah. one of the great uh, arguments I had when I I was uh, debating with a Christian, I, I just took the mantle of a pacifarian for two minutes of the little I know about it, and just because I wanted to troll him <laughs> for a bit, <laughs> and, and he was giving me, of course, the, the same kind of arguments of God of the gaps and all that stuff. And I said, you know, I said, of course, the flying spaghetti monster is real. I mean, if why are meatballs? Why why are planted rounds like round like meatballs? I mean. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> First of all, that's cultural right. appropriation. Well, so, um, you know, say to me, uh, like you can't actually. I mean, that can't you can't actually believe that. And I like, and I say, well, or, you know, I ask what denomination or what belief they have. Mm -hmm. I said, do you really, do you really seriously believe in a virgin birth? Do you seriously believe that a fella named Noah and seven other people built this freaking big ark? And loaded it full of all the animals and dinosaurs included, and uh, you know, lived out a, a worldwide flood. Do you actually believe these things? Mm -hmm. So you know, when when it, it really offers an opportunity to peop for people, hopefully, uh, to reflect on their own beliefs. And you know, our epistemologies all differ, right? Mm -hmm. How we come to know the things that we know uh, varies, you know. To the same extent that we are different from each other, um, you know, uh, you could get ten Christians, you could get a hundred Christians in, in the same room and and ask them point by point the things that they believe, and and you would not have a consensus. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that's that's where, where you know we sort of get behind, is um, we we don't know the answer, but it is just it is just as good an explanation. As anyone else has, yeah, I think it's the image, that, the, the the comical image of spaghetti and yeah. balls with flying eyes and all that, that that people just get shocked at it. But I remember using that same kind of argument with my mother. My mother's a uh, good 
Catholic woman as well, so she's full of guilt. And, yeah. <laughs> and I said to her, I said, so yeah. look, you, you told me that your God's impregnated uh, a, a 12 year old girl with himself to set to sacrifice himself to himself to other to appease right. him for what a dirt man and a rib woman taking dietary advice from a snake in a magical garden. <laughs> exactly. And she looks at me and says, Well, when you put it that way, it was, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> That's the point. There's no flaw in what I just said there. This is the, the crux of your religion is exactly that. Mm -hmm. It's reducto ad absurdum. Like yeah. <laughs> so when, when you use like grandiose flowery language, everything sounds great, you know. Sure. <laughs> but when you when you reduce it to simple components, you realize, wow, this this is really stupid. This is yeah, yeah, yeah. When you use a lot of uh, and and so it came to pass. Yes. I mean, <laughs> include enough of those, and anything sounds realistic. And in fact, uh, you read over the, the Book of Mormon, and I think it's used over a thousand times or some silly thing. Um, it's and it's course, unnatural. Know. Like, it's unnatural yeah, the amount they've used. Uh, it, it's not, I mean, if anyone could call the, uh, the, the Bible convincing, um, the Book of Mormon is not. Um, <laughs> and I don't find the, the Bible very convincing. So no. That kind, of puts, that kind of puts it in its place. I think we should start doing that more and more, though. Like, just before you came in, so Sabrina and Brent went to the bathroom. It came to pass that they went to the bathroom <laughs> and then came back. <laughs> and, and, then you, and then you follow that with uh, this too shall pass. This too shall pass <laughs> with bated breath. <laughs> the, the, the toilet was flushed. This too came to pass. Right. This too shall pass. This yeah. Too shall pass. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to point out that uh, at the time we, I think we first connected here um, about coming on the show. Um, uh, this was just after the uh, Supreme Court case um, that I uh, filed against uh, the Human Rights Tribunal. Okay. You guys there? Yeah. Yeah, we're there. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So. So anyway, I, I following up on that, um, I had gone into uh, the driver services there, and I had uh, uh, I had obtained uh, a sheet uh, on that gave some direction uh, to uh, ICBC agents uh, with respect to uh, what they call hair accessories, and uh, so people are allowed to wear a hair accessory as long as it's uh, above the hairline and it doesn't obstruct the. Uh, the, the face. Um, and so what I did is I, I had a, one of my uh, crew, uh, they paint, painted up a bandana um, that met the, the specific criteria and put the FSM symbol on it. it. <laughs> and so I gone in and uh, I, I got a letter back uh, from my CBC saying, well, you've gone in there and again now looking for um, a, a accommodation under this uh, religious um, uh, head covering thing. And I said, actually, I did no such thing. I just went in because you guys have a policy with respect to hair accessories and mine just so happens to have a symbol on it. So mm -hmm. he said, no, you can't, you can't use that. Go into ICBC and, and take your head covering off. So I, uh, after following my temporary or the expiration of my uh, temporary license, I went into my local office in Grand Forks and again, I was wearing um, the bandana. Um, and so they kept me on the phone there. You know, they were on the phone for an hour, just trying to wear me down a little bit. Mm. And she says, well, we'll let you take, we'll, we'll take your picture with your hair accessory, but you have to turn it over and hide the symbol. No. And I said, what, what specific policy are you referring to in requiring me to do that? And she started to you know, mumble and, on the phone again, trying to get an answer to it. And I said, look, I'm going to make this absolutely easy for you. And I took off my bandana and I had on my forehead a temporary tattoo <laughs> of the very, of that very same symbol. <laughs> Her jaw dropped. And he says, okay, let's do it. Love it. And so uh, they took my photo and sure enough, four weeks later, I have my photo uh, with my religious symbol uh, right on my forehead and so <laughs> and so this this <laughs> this is the wedge this is the sharp edge of the wedge that we're driving into this whole icbc failed policy crap yeah. love it thank that's you a, 
And so now we're just looking for other people that are, because I, I, of course, I bought, I didn't buy just one temporary tattoo. I bought a bunch of them. <laughs> and I'll mail them out to whoever wants to go in and get their license changed. I'll even pay the $17 for it to get done. But again, <laughs> it's about just getting the word out there, getting some volume so that we can go in and then at some point say, you know, have a, you know, have a gal go in with who actually has hair, because certainly I don't. Um, but who would wear a hair accessory at that symbol. And if they put up a fuss, we just say, well, look, you allow people to wear it as a, as a tattoo on their forehead. Why not on this bandana? Yeah, exactly. And if, and if the bandana is good, well, why not a tricorn? And if a tricorn is good, why not a colander? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, again, it's, it, it's about driving a wedge in. What, what, I, I don't understand what the difference would be between, between the, the bandana and somebody uh, like a, from a Sikhism wearing a full turban. Yes. Exactly. It's the same thing. It, it, and that's absolutely right. And, you know, the whole policy that from their point of view or the way they worded it is that they give this accommodation to those persons whose beliefs prohibit them from removing their headgear. And, uh, you know, I've time and again uh, even appealed to um, – a Jagmeet Singh, or mm -hmm. the NDP uh, leader, mm -hmm. who in a in a CBC interview said straight up, he says, "We're not prohibited from uh, removing our headgear. No. It's it's a choice, and it's how." We it. Oh, so yeah, perfect, Mr. Pirate. Uh, may, yes. Maybe you'd be so kind to uh, inform some of our listeners as well as some of the tenets of Pastafarianism. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm sure you guys have a holy book and some laws and some uh, things you have to do as a devout member of the religion. Um, well, so like I say, uh, we're probably the least dogmatic uh, mm -hmm. of all religions out there. Um, and we don't have like the Ten Commandments, but we have the eight I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> um, I love it. <laughs> you know, awesome. I think I need to join a new religion. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. And you know, we also have a God back guarantee. So, um, if you decide to, uh, you know, switch over to Pastafarianism, uh, give a give us thirty days, and uh, if it doesn't work out for you, uh, there's a good chance that your God will take you back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Unless you're Muslim, because uh, apparently you get death for apostasy. So, well, well what if they don't manage to kill you within 30 days? Maybe you can crawl back to to, to Allah. At that point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is we, we do have a gospel, uh, the Gospel of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, which was penned by our prophet uh, Bobby Henderson, mm -hmm. um, and of course, uh, many authors uh, from all different kinds of backgrounds and and, and different countries of. Uh, the library is building, um, so uh, lots of uh, lots of material out there, um, and of course, you know, we come up with our shanties and our prayers and and all the other good stuff uh, to to keep the to keep the faith alive. Do you, do you have a good a good right. example of a shanty for us? Maybe we could put ourselves in the, in well, the spirit. I, how, how about I how about I read you our Quab's prayer? Sounds good. Please. Let's, yeah, let's, let's bow our head in prayer. And <laughs> okay. And at the end, uh, say Ramen with me. Ramen. <laughs> Ramen. <laughs> our, our new Lord, who art in a colander, al dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our commitment, and forgive us our cussing, as we put up with those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs, for thine are the noodles and the sauces. And the grog, whenever and ever. Grog. Oh, man. <laughs> that was oh, brilliant. Is not into ketoism that is probably my brilliant. favorite line. Thank you for adding that. <laughs> oh, my God. That was absolutely brilliant. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! Yeah. So I, I'm I'm also told that in Pastafarianism you are considered more blessed if you are a person of a short stature. Is that correct? Uh, well, they were the they were the initial ones. Yeah, uh, that was, uh, the flying spaghetti monster. The first thing, uh, the first human he created was a midget. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Oh, this is great. <laughs> and, you know, and, and a couple other things about, about our religion, like, uh, you know, our afterlife. Uh, of course, we have our own version of heaven and hell. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so the past fairy in heaven is, uh, is, has a beer volcano and uh, in a stripper factory. <laughs> and, and, and for those who are not so, uh, you know, those who go to the uh, um, past fairy in hell, well, they, there's a beer volcano there, but it's stale beer. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and the cool strippers all have STDs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. <laughs> this is an awesome, awesome religion. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, Dread, Dread Pirate, I know you guys are, are, are fighting a good fight, and I, you know, my hat's off to you guys for mm -hmm. doing such a thing, such a, a wonderful thing, because it, uh, there's a lot of little things like that. In the States, you always hear the, the big fights and they're, they're, they're front of the, of the news. But here in Canada, it's much, much yeah. more subtle, mm -hmm. right? What's that, sorry? Uh, it's much more subtle. The fights are much more subtle, uh, what, what's happening. But it is happening yeah. nonetheless. Yep. Well, we, I mean, because we tend to apologize a lot, right? So <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm I, sorry. I, I remember one time, uh, speaking of ICBC, it's kind of funny because uh, we went to, uh, we lived in Abbotsford, and in yep. Abbotsford, they have, uh, around Christmas, ICBC on one of their properties, they used to put this big nativity scene. Until we oh, went okay. to, until we went to them and basically said, you know, uh, you guys are an arm of the government. You're supposed to represent secular values. You're not supposed to favor right. a, a religion over another. And they took the argument and they basically removed the uh, nativity scene and replaced and, it with. And, and well, they should. Yeah, well, they, should. Mm -hmm. they should. And they replaced it with you some know, kind of generic Christmas tree thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, and uh, of course that was, uh, you know, the uh, the the church of, or, or the 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 Satanists. Um, you know, they put up. They erected that statue of Baphomet. Yes, uh, beside the nativity scene, uh, you know, just as in general uh, protest or mm -hmm. in protest of the fact that if you're going to have you know display one, display them all. Yep. Or none, right? So right. So as as a uh, as a member of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, when you look at the future of atheism and how uh, religion is intertwined in our society, do you feel positive about the future, or do you feel more that we're heading towards a darker path? Well, our next step um, is to actually. Uh, so we've got interest, and in, we've got people from across Canada who are you know members of our church. Um, and we're going. We're, so we're taking this to the national level. Mm -hmm. So what we are, uh, our intention here in, in just the next month or so, is to actually have our um, objects uh, of incorporation as a charitable religious society, a federal society, which will, you know, enable uh, people in individual provinces to then form churches under the provincial. Uh, regulations mm -hmm. in each province, because because Alberta, for instance, has been not been denied the right to form uh, a, a nonprofit um, organization as the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster because really? uh, because of you know the the same kind of nonsense reasons that um, other you know ICBC and mm -hmm. such uh, state as the rationale. Um, so so that's our our big step. So that um, under that larger Canadian umbrella, uh, it legitimizes the efforts of uh, individual organizations in each province to do the same. If we get some fuss, which uh, I am almost quite certain will be the case, mm -hmm. uh, well, then, then we go to the Supreme Court. And because the Supreme Court of BC uh, indicated that it was not their place to... Uh, to um, argue uh, matters of, of the Charter, of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and that alone resides with the Supreme Court of Canada, well, then that's where we'll, where we'll take it. Hmm. And um, we're looking, you know, hopefully we've got, uh, you know, some interest from, you know, a lawyer or lawyers willing mm -hmm. to do some pro bono work um, in order to, uh, to support us. The BC, uh, the BC Humanist Association, uh, Ian Bushfield, is uh, the executive director. I've been in contact with him now for um, probably three or four years, mm. and he's indicated that their organization 
would support us as a friend of court, as would the uh, BC uh, Civil Liberties Association. So oh, um, there's, there is interest out there mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, fundamentally it is a charter, uh, a charter argument. Mm -hmm. And um, if we can argue that successfully at a federal level, if they give us any grief, we'll argue it at the federal level and uh, we'll have friends in court and we'll make a big, big splash of this. Fantastic. I sure hope you do. I sure hope you yeah, do. Yeah, me too. So yeah. uh, thank you so much, Mr. Pirate. You're welcome. Red mm -hmm. Pirates Higgs, for coming on the show and explaining this to us. Uh, if people want to find out more about your piratey adventures and where they can support the Church of Flying Spaghetti Monster, where can they go? Well, um, they can email us at cfsmbc at gmail.com. Um, we also have a Facebook page, but you the only it's a private group because of course um, there are people who would um, use uh, Facebook as a means mm -hmm. to um, you know dox or yeah. cancel yep. of course. Uh, people. So it's a private group. Mm -hmm. but if uh, but if they write um, and indicate in a somewhat sincere manner that uh, they believe what we're up to, um, they can get a personal invite to come onto our Facebook group. Okay. And we're just putting the finishing touches on our web page as well. Mm. Um, and that will be uh, flyingspaghettimonster.org. Fantastic. Uh -huh. And if, you, if you're not sure, just send us the message here at Left of the Valley and we will pass it on mm -hmm. to the yeah, pirate. Sure. Definitely. So perfect. Uh, Arr, this is Dread Pirate Higgs of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. And I'm on this fabulous show. Good enough. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. We'll like, oh, add you in post. <laughs> right? No, I'm kidding. Well, 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 thank you so much, uh, Dreza. Much, no, much no appreciate problem. it. Hey, I really appreciate you guys, uh, and you sound like a fun bunch. So yeah. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, you know, uh, stay linked up to your, uh, to your web page there. Yeah, I, I checked over uh, uh, through Kevin there. I, I checked. Uh, Check you guys out, and so I really appreciate all the all the things that you guys are doing. Uh, yes, and you're part of the family now. If you need to come back and talk about more about what's going on, you let us know. We'll bring you back, my friend. Yeah, yeah. If you have something that you want to get out there, yeah. Gotcha. Sounds good. You have a great day, good sir. Thank you. Oh, by the way, uh, this will probably air um, tomorrow, most likely. And okay. what when it does, I will send you the link. Feel free to share it as much as you want. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And I'll, I'll put it right on the. I'll put it right on our Facebook page Perfect. and. Uh, on my YouTube channel. Like I said, open invitation, my friend. Yeah, definitely. Let us know when okay. you want to come Sounds back. Sounds great. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Okay, take care. Bye, Bye. now. And that was Dread Pirate Hoogs. Great fella. Yes. Yar, he made Such you. a small world. Oh, actually, do you know him. Ma made you walk the plank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I was that was funny. In his his pictures and whatnot and he's quite active in our community groups when i was in Gr at grand fork so i i actually have i'm glad because oh, shit. That's yeah, awesome. yeah it's really kind of neat i'm glad because you know a lot of atheists have a tendency to uh yeah they're atheists but they don't get to that second step where they're active and mm -hmm. trying to i'm not saying necessarily push atheism but at least push back mm -hmm. against churches that basically do their best to make everybody's life miserable yep and uh, so I'm glad that somebody like uh, like uh, our, pi our pirate, pirate friend, Higgs, yeah. our pirate Higgs, there, basically is using humor, mm -hmm. and uh, he makes good sense, you know. Yeah. And and yeah. small battles, small battles, it happens everywhere. And I'm, the tenant of of the flying spaghetti monster or something that I'm I'm totally cool yeah, with. Yeah, Plus no. the prayer, come on now. I mean, yeah, it, it was, was, that's funny. It, in a country like Canada, it might not show as much as in a country like the, the U.S., mm -hmm. but I remember just a couple of years ago uh, when I was living in Abbotsford, Mission, um, I was talking to the uh, member of Legislative Assembly, and on his front office, he had this huge painting in the window there of the nativity scene, and I went in a meeting with him and told him, you can't do that. You represent everybody, not just the Christians, yep. and he told me to my face, he basically says, oh, it's not a Christian symbol. Yes, the nativity is. scene is that a Christian symbol? It's are you fucking Jesus kidding me? Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? But this this is the oh, yeah, kind yeah. of contortions they do. Yeah. And this is the kind of stuff like the Church of Flying Spaghetti Monster or the Satanist or active atheists will do to fight against that. Yeah, absolutely. To push back. I love the tattoo on the forehead with ICBC. Oh, That's know. great. That, that is great. absolutely yeah. fantastic. For, for American friends, brilliant. Really. BC is our our licensing uh, in BC Department of Motor Vehicles. Yeah, it's our DMV. So you basically. do DMV. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's where you get our driver's licenses and all of our insurance also. Basic insurance that covers like uh, if you like third party liability insurance, it's all through ICBC. Yeah, even, even our insurance is socialist. Yeah. <laughs> it, only in BC. Uh, it's, what? It's yeah. the provinces, but in BC, it's, it's uh, province wide. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, I see. So, wow. Yeah, so it was an interesting show, and I think it was a very interesting to meet him. And I'm sure we'll look forward to hearing much more about what the pirate has in stock for the next yeah. couple of times. So, all right, thank you so much for being on the show, guys, and yeah. thank you to our guest, Dread Pirate Higgs, mm -hmm. and thank you to my co-host Sabrina and Brentley. Mm -hmm. You can find us at left at the valley. No, sorry, left at valley at outlook.com. We love to hear from you. You can look at our uh, site at um, left at left at the valley dot ca dot ca dot very ca very important .com. <laughs> You can find us on Facebook on 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 Twitter at letv podcast. Uh, you can uh, help us on Patreon. You can help us on Patreon by uh, going to patreon dot com slash letv and become a patron of the show where you get an unedited version. And lots of behind the scenes stuff. And we've got other things brewing for our Patreon. So, yeah. you know, get in early. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. A quick plug, uh, Brent, for Unapologetics. Yeah. Uh, Unapologetics, uh, spelled with an X. Yeah, check it out. And uh, there's also the Unapologetics panel stream, who's mm -hmm. on ban for a fucking week. But, you know, yeah. that, we'll yeah. be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. All right. Coming up next week, we'll have John Richards of Atheism UK. We'll also have a Black Seekers. We have the Pacifarian, and we'll also have the Satanist, Steve Hill. I'm excited for that, too. We'll also have, uh, from the Native Press, Roy Dahl. That should yes. be interesting. Northern Canada. And we'll also have the deconversion of Nathan Brown. Mm -hmm. We'll also, in September, we'll have Steve Grumbine talk about uh, modern monetary theory. Wow. <laughs> oh, no. Todd Frank Miller for Critical Thinking. And we'll also have Mary B. Lepage talk about religious trauma. Holy moly, we got lots of good stuff coming yeah. up. Yeah, lots of good stuff coming on the phone. Wow. I like this. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Tell your friends, subscribe, hit the like, five star reviews. It does. It helps us. It helps others yep. find the show. Absolutely. Thank you so much, guys. Until next time. Religion is a disease. It comes from culture. Only true on a regional scale. Science is universal. Words you can say that Horus isn't real, but Jesus is. Or Zeus, Thor, Mithra, Vishnu, you don't believe in them.